Hello everybody, today I'm gonna tell you if I actually found the one bag to rule them all and if it actually may be for you as well. So myself and probably a lot of you as well are looking for the perfect bag for all kinds of photography. May that be seascape photography where you have sand going everywhere um, or you're going on a longer hike and you want a comfortable backpack that can comfortably hold all your gear. Um, food, beverage, maybe a um, waterproof and windproof jacket. On the odd occasion you might even want to go out and do one or two nights somewhere out in the wilderness and sometimes you just want to hit your local forest, shoot some um, moody, foggy woodland scenes and sometimes you might be traveling and you want to hit the city and shoot there. Either way you need a comfortable, rugged, big enough but sleek and simple looking backpack for all of that. And when you're traveling you also want your gear to be accessible but also want to keep it safe and i think i might have found the perfect solution for that anyway my goal today as you can see i'm uh, stood in the local woodland area it's not really a birch forest where i'm stood but it's rather a meadow with birch trees on there um, it's a location i found a couple of days ago um, which I'm really happy about because I really like birch trees especially in winter because they actually give you a bit more contrast rather than just being this brown green like all the other trees um, it's actually near a location that I took my maybe maybe favorite one of my favorite pictures of 2022 um, it's this cliff with birch trees on as well um, and the birch trees were still blooming it was um, there were yellow leaves on there looked really beautiful um, yeah, but I found this location a couple of days ago, really happy, and today my goal is, even though I don't have great conditions, because there's no fog, um, I mean it's overcast, so it's not too bad. Probably sorry for the wind noise. Today my goal is to find a composition here to maybe come back to, or maybe I find a cool composition without any fog. Just, just so you know, I'm sorry for any wind noise that might appear in the video. Um, it's very windy today, there was just a wind gust that uh, felt like it would blow all the trees over um, and I know there was a problem with the wind in the last video as well. Um, might be my microphone, maybe need to get like a little laugh mic or something like that, um, maybe that helps, I don't know. Um, just sorry, already in advance. Alright, so there's a saying on there that's something like buy cheap, buy twice and the gist of that saying is that if you buy something that's more affordable or cheap um, it will be more likely to break or wear out or just not be fit for the purpose you want it for and thus you will have to rebuy that item in a higher quality and thus buying it twice now that obviously doesn't mean that when you're getting into photography you need to go all out there and buy a 300 euro lens filter system, a 500 euro tripod and a 300 or 400 euro back. Um, but you should really think about what's important to your photography and what you really need. For example, I think most people can make do without buying an expensive lens filter system, especially in the beginning. So have I. I have three filters, I got a couple of affordable adapter rings and that's it and I'm not planning on extending this lineup in the near future. And I think the same goes for tripods. For example, when I first got into photography, I got a cheap 30 or 40 euro tripod off of Amazon that was very plasticky, it was unstable, it wasn't fit for my needs at all and I quickly realized that I needed to get another tripod and I got the one I have currently, I'm currently using. It was about 120 euros and um, yeah, for now I can make do with it until I will get another tripod that fit my needs perfectly. Uh, fits my needs perfectly and um, yeah though with a downside of a bigger price tag of course and now to this video's actual topic photography bags um, very early on in my photography career if you want to call it that i got a very simple and affordable camera bag that you could use to go out in the city you could put some lenses you put put your camera in there but it very quickly reached its limitations. And also there was no space for an extra jacket, like a windproof or waterproof jacket. And if you wanted to take snacks or um, beverages, you had to put it in the main compartment, which was the only compartment. And personally, I don't want to put my beverages, snacks uh, with my camera and lenses in the same compartment. Um, also, what was very tedious was when you had to put your tripod on, especially when you're outside, um, you had to attach it with these two latches on the bottom was just very tedious. 
but the worst thing in my opinion is that the backpack actually opens up on the front so might the zipper fail um, it is way easier for your gear to fall out which is kind of concerning and also it's easier for people to access your gear and theoretically steal your gear of course um, another point on that fact that the zipper opens up at the front it's annoying when you're especially out when you're um, doing woodland and landscape photography and you have a muddy ground and you put your backpack down because you want to access your gear you have to put the side of the backpack down that is usually on your back which will get your clothes dirty um, which is always kind of annoying also the mesh on that side is usually a bit harder to clean so yeah all in all I would just like to like to have the backpack open up on the back not on the front in addition to that because the backpack is rather small it's obviously missing hip belts and uh, when you're out for a longer session especially when you're hiking it's just not the most comfortable backpack so those were my criteria when looking for a backpack and um, I went to a couple of photography stores looked at backpacks there I read reviews online I watched countless of YouTube videos on different backpacks honestly to the point that I was just overwhelmed with uh, with backpacks, photography backpacks, um, until I found the Shimoda Action X50 backpack, which I think was around, released around 2018-19, so I'm definitely late to the party. Um, and it costs about 350 euros for the backpack alone and 100 euros extra for the ICU. So because of this hefty price tag, I wasn't sure if I wanted to get the backpack, even though it does everything I want of it and even more. Um, but then, then I was thinking again buy cheap buy twice if I would get a backpack for 150 to 200 euros now that could do almost everything I want but not quite I would probably end up buying the more expensive backpack in the future anyway and would just spend more money in the end in all honesty though um, my wonderful girlfriend got me this backpack as a gift for Christmas so I actually didn't need to buy it but the gist of it still stays the same um, if you're just gonna buy cheap you're gonna buy twice and spend more money down the road so for about two weeks now I've owned the Shimoda Action X50 backpack um, I chose to go with the X50 instead of the X30 because the X30 was just a bit too small I thought for all my needs um, for all my gear and my accessories and I also didn't go with the X70 because I still wanted a backpack that was able to that I was able to have as a carry-on on a flight now I've been out with this backpack three times in the last two weeks, each for about three to four hours, just shooting um, local woodland scenes. And I have to say the backpack is quite heavy itself at about two kilos without anything inside and with all my gear like my camera, tripod, beverages, snacks, rain jacket, etc. It adds up to about 10 kilos, which can be quite heavy if you carry 10 kilos for four hours straight. And I know with my old backpack that didn't have any hip belts, I would have felt that weight immediately. Um, I have to say though, the Shimoda Action X50 does a great job balancing the weight from, I guess, away from your shoulders towards your hip. Um, and I can honestly say that I haven't felt the weight once. Okay, as you can see, I think uh, I'm completely soaked. Uh, there was a rain shower that just poured through. Um, took about 10 minutes and after that I was gone but there was a quick interruption and now there's blue skies, a couple of clouds um, and yeah, great conditions to shoot pictures now. I'll just tell you my three reasons why I went with the Shimoda Action X50 backpack instead of the other brands, I guess, um, and then I'm gonna start looking for compositions. Um, I've read a couple of reviews or watched a couple of reviews online and I saw a couple of people say that the hip belts on the Shimoda Action X50 um, aren't the best. Um, they're a bit flimsy apparently, but honestly now I can say from personal experience I had zero problem with that. Now this backpack does everything I want and more, um, but there are obviously other backpacks in the same price category from other manufacturers that can do the same, for example from F-Stop, um, Near Evo, Low Pro, etc. But there are three particular reasons that led me to get the getting the Shimoda Action X50. First of all, what I really love about the Shimoda Action X50 is the roll top on top. Um, usually I think when uh, backpacks have roll tops they look kind of dorky, but honestly Shimoda did it in a way that it I feel like integrates perfectly with the backpack itself. It's not even really visible if you have it down, but if you actually need the roll top and the extra space you 
have it there. And also if you don't need the roll top um, or if you have something in uh, the backpack but don't want to roll up the roll top, you can just open up uh, the compartment through a handy zipper. The second thing I really like about the backpack is that you have loops and pockets anywhere you could think of and need. Um, for example, be it on both the sides. Um, where you have these mesh pockets that you can take out and you can put a big bottle of water or you can put a tripod or two tripods, whatever you fancy in there um, or on the shoulder straps where you can put your phone in one side and a big bottle like a thermos bottle on the other side. Also on the inside of the backpack you have uh, plenty of compartments to put all kinds of stuff. Now thirdly I just really like the simple design of the backpack. Um, it looks very minimal if you can say that about a backpack that size I guess yet it does its job perfectly um, I myself have the black color version of the backpack um, I feel like it just attracts less attention where you don't want to attract attention um, though I really dig the gray colored version as well all in all I'm just really happy with this backpack it does its job perfectly it does everything I want in a backpack well almost all right so I think I found my first composition or rather I found a cool subject, uh, now I have to find the composition for it. Um, you have these two birch trees right here and you have two birch trees and a smaller tree right next to the one birch tree right there. And um, I immediately had a sentence come to mind when I saw this, which is strangers in a distance, because it looks like these two trees are strangers to these trees here and it looks like the small tree because it's so close to the one birch tree. It's like, like a kid hiding behind uh, their parents or something like that. Um, anyway, it's just a sentence that came to mind. I will try to find a composition for this now and um, yeah, I'll show you in a minute. Alright, so I think I found a composition for this. Um, obviously this now, what you're looking at is 16 by 9. I would shoot it in 3 by 2. Um, and what I did is right here, you have this little tree that's hiding behind the birch tree and then you have now these three trees, I guess in the distance. Um, earlier I was standing right there and you could see these trees here were quite close together and these both these trees were I guess in the distance um, and I just try to separate like a line through here and through here and try to have everything from this little tree um, in the frame as well yeah I'm just gonna show you I don't know how that works out I realized that one backpack just can't do everything from hiking, landscape photography, to woodland photography, to travel photography. It's just not really possible all three in one backpack. Um, my gripe with it is that when you're traveling, because for the hiking and the landscape and the woodland it's perfect I think, but the problem is when you're traveling and especially when you're in cities, the backpack is just too large, you just attract too much attention with all that camera gear inside. It's, I personally just don't like it, but I have a good solution to that because I got the um, was it Peak Design Everyday Sling version 2 I think in the 3 liter version. Um, I've had it for about a year now, I bought it for about 100 euros um, and it's a small little um, camera bag that perfectly integrates into the Shimoda Action X50 and you can actually use it as like a little core unit when you don't like when you need the extra space so still great for traveling but you will have to take out the peak design and use it when you're walking around cities so basically when I'm traveling I will take both backpacks or both bags um, I will take the Shimoda Action X50 to put all my gear in, use it as a carry-on on the plane and I will in addition to that put the Peak Design Everyday Sling in there as a core unit to put some more gear in and uh, when I'm out on location, if I go to cities, I'll just take the Everyday Sling and when I'm doing landscape photography, I'll take the Shimoda Action X50. Now you have to be aware that the Peak Design 3 liter sling bag won't hold all your gear which is quite obvious, but personally I can fit my X-T4 without the L-bracket um, as well as my 16 to 80 mm and my 70 to 300 mm lens, lenses both without their lens hoods in there though I kind of have to force it in because so I usually don't do that what I usually do is I'll take my 16 to 80 mm lens with my X-T4 
and then I'll put um, some other accessories in there like sunglasses or keys and I will put um, or I will put my X-T4 with a 23mm and my 12mm prime lens in there and that just works for me. In addition to that I have like a cheap uh, wristband from Amazon that I use on there as well because usually when I'm walking around cities I will have my camera in my hand all the time anyway. So I haven't had the Shimoda Action X50 for too long now. Um, two weeks now but I've owned the Peak Design sling bag for about a year now and I've used it frequently and I can honestly say that uh, these two bags in combination are the best or my perfect camera lens carrying solution and I'm sure they will last me for a long time to come. So just to recap, if you go from a very I guess affordable, low quality, not very versatile gear to incredibly versatile, high quality, but also unfortunately expensive gear, um, you not only avoid spending unnecessary amounts of money, but you also get a huge bump in versatility and I think joy out of your gear, which you just wouldn't get if you would upgrade in small incremental steps. Um, and that way you might even not really feel the impact of all the gear you're buying. Anyway, this is it from me for today. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you think of the two bags I just presented to you. If you agree with me that that may be the perfect uh, camera carrying solution. Um, and yeah, maybe you already have uh, good bags. Let me know in the comments down below what bags are you using or what bags do you want to get, if not these two. Um, yeah, if you want to support the channel, I'd appreciate if you'd give me a thumbs up down below. And if you want to see more of these kind of videos, just subscribe to the channel down below. That's it from me for today. Have a good day. Bye.